Hello, everyone. Uh, so the topic for today is uh, a bit of a, a comical one, really. You know, um, do you do you relate to this? Do you have a fear of being attractive, but also a fear of not being attractive? <laughs> and this, strangely, is quite a common um, experience. So in other words, uh, there's a desire within you, as within most people, uh, to look and feel attractive and to be desired by others. But there's also a real fear of that happening. Now, if this is the case for you, um, it's important to sort of understand it in terms of the subconscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind cannot hold two opposing beliefs or two opposing desires. Um, and when you've got this uh, sort of uh, belief going on, uh, on the one hand, you're telling your subconscious mind that I want to feel attractive. But on the other hand, you're telling it, no, I don't. <laughs> so what the subconscious mind, what its main aim is, is to keep you safe on the planet, um, to protect you. So being the brilliant thing that it is, the subconscious mind will try to meet both of your desires for you, because that's what the subconscious mind does. It responds to our commands, the commands we give it and the pictures we give it. So it will go about in your life then trying to facilitate times where you feel attractive, but then it will try to keep you safe from that. So. It will try to do both of what you're asking, but it will also try to protect you from it. So you may experience this sort of struggle within you. You know, you may experience this desire to feel attractive, but on the other hand, also this sort of all wanting to hold back from it at the same time. And this can play out very obviously um, in things like, you know, you might start going to the gym, you might start eating right, you might be taking care of yourself and your physical appearance. Uh, but then at some point you sabotage it, uh, whether that may be with something like, um, you know, food, binge eating, or um, it may even be things like skin picking or things like that can also be as a means of protecting you from feeling um, attractive. Or even the body itself, which is the subconscious mind, an expression of the subconscious mind, can come up with ways to keep you from feeling attractive. Uh, so it might be things quite often like skin issues can be that because the skin is a, a boundary, a natural boundary between us and the outside world. Um, so you might be doing all these things to make you feel attractive, but then, you know, have an outbreak of spots or... Uh, have skin rashes or whatever it might be. Um, another common way of, of, of this playing out is in weight gain, um, you know, and not being able to lose it. Uh, despite all the dieting and, you know, whatever it may be, subconsciously your mind is clinging on to it because it's a way of protecting you from feeling fabulous, from feeling your best self. Um, from feeling attractive and desirable. So the subconscious mind is trying to both fulfill your desires, but also protect you from uh, the fear uh, that having them may bring. So where does this all come from? Because there is a root cause of this. Um, and this sort of uh, dilemma between attractiveness being a good thing but also being something not wanted or something bad well it comes from childhood where being attractive was both a good thing for you but could also be a shameful or dangerous thing something not good so if you grew up in a narcissistic family system uh you'll know that how you look is everything <laughs> uh, how much attention you garner from others um, is everything because for the narcissist that is what supply is and that is how they find their self-worth is in 
the admiration or even just the attention of others. So narcissistic parents need supply um, and supply is attention and admiration. And so growing up with that sort of role model, you, may, you yourself may have picked up some of those uh, traits, but what you do is then you associate those with any feeling of, of, of wanting to be attractive. You almost associate it with something to do with your narcissistic parent. And you, it's a bad quality in you when it's not really. In the same vein, your attractiveness may have been a trigger for your narcissistic parent. If you felt attractive or you felt um, desirable, uh, they may have taken that as um, you competing with them, uh, you sort of trying to strut your stuff um, and, and rob them of potential attention. Uh, they may have taken that as a personal sort of um, affront to them. And so you began to associate um, feeling attractive um, and believing that you were with something that was going to cause rejection. And that if you allowed yourself to feel that, it would bring rejection from others. And, and potentially some narcissistic parents can even go to mocking and uh, belittling and really bringing you down a peg or two. Or your narcissistic parent may have lived vicariously through you, as in a, a smothering relationship or an enmeshed one. Um, and the parent may have... Uh, delighted in the attention that you could get from others in terms of looking attractive um, and and taken it for their own, used it as their own sort of uh, source of supply because they would only have seen you as an extension of them. Um, so that's also uh, a potential source of this sort of um, deliberation between wanting to be attractive and and feeling that it's a bad thing or um and this is more common than i'd like to say but you come from a, a situation or a background of, of sexual abuse you know where one or both of your parents um showed an inappropriate desire for you physically but you see saying this that those moments may have been the only moments where you did feel seen and wanted and of value. Um, and so on the one hand, you desire that, but on the other hand, you're also you also know that it's shameful, that it's it's not it's not it's not something good. Um, so there we have that dilemma again. So the fear of being attractive. <laughs> And the fear of not being attractive has its clear roots in the narcissistic family system. And I would suggest if you do, if you do struggle with this, um, it, it could most certainly be a sign that you've come from some kind of dysfunctional um, family unit. And I would really suggest that um, it may also be a sign that it would be good to do some work on this blueprint that is running the show of your life. You know, the subconscious mind will keep you in this uh, pattern uh, because it believes it's doing what's best for you. But, but we we want to liberate you from this. We want you to to embrace your attractiveness, you know, in, in every possible way without fear, um, because you know you're meant to you're meant to shine out and be feel fabulous <laughs> without fear uh, of you know being rejected or um of being used um or of being shamed for it um so if that's something that resonates with you and you'd like to do some inner work on this book in for a co uh, consultation and we can get started and um, we can get you uh, feeling your your most fabulous self <laughs> um, and without any fear. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Take care.